Hi everyone, the name is Hi everyone, the name is Eric Doran. Today's video is about imposter syndrome in INFPs and ISFPs. So this video goes out to anyone who ever tends to downplay their value and worth to society. You are better than what you think and you are capable of more than what you realize. So I've noticed that INFPs and ISFPs, alongside a lot of INFJs and ISFJs like myself, struggle with this tendency to underplay their own skills and abilities. So this is something that can have really dramatic and negative consequences in your life. If you suffer from imposter syndrome, you can constantly find yourself holding yourself back from thriving and being happy and being successful in life and in work. So the problem with imposter syndrome is kind of a tendency to feel that you don't deserve the success you've had in life. You don't like when people praise your skills and you don't think you are as accomplished as people say. You don't accept or appreciate the rewards that you get because you don't feel that you've earned them. You feel that you are afraid that people will realize that you're a fraud, that you're not as smart as you make yourself out to be. You think that most of the accomplishments that you've had were just a fluke and you don't accept compliments. So you downplay achievements because you don't think your achievements are as amazing as people think. Now, INFPs and ISFPs, they're interesting because if you compare them to say an ENTJ or an ESTJ, ENTJs and ESTJs are remarkably confident and proud of their skills and abilities. You know, these types, they tend to brag about their strengths. They tend to trust in their confidence and in their ability to get things done. And they tend to boast and to seek rewards for the success that they feel they have earned. While these types tend to believe they are worthy of greater reward, greater status, greater success. While these types tend to seek compliments and approval from other people, INFPs and ISFPs tend to actively avoid it. So there's a feeling of, of wanting to avoid being shared for, wanting to avoid being praised, wanting to avoid being complimented. And so the imposter syndrome can take on pretty dramatic and pretty negative and self-destructive qualities. Something I've noticed is, uh, even, as my, even myself as an INFJ, I have a tendency to, um, what should you say, hide the good things I do from other people around me because I don't want them to notice it. So I hide the good I do and I pretend that it didn't happen at all. And if they notice it happened or try to compliment me for it, I say it was just an accident or I pretend it was done by somebody else. So often I will give the credit to other people who I feel are more deserving or I will uh, take the blame for problems that I'm not worthy or deserving of. So when there are issues at work or struggles in my life, often I tend to make myself into the scapegoat. And that means I tend to say, yeah, it was because I didn't say that or because I didn't do that or because I should have done this better or because I should have recognized or done something differently. And so I have a tendency to make the one thing I didn't do the cause of a billion problems that weren't mine in the first place. <laughs> I notice with imposter syndrome that it can be dramatically negative because it can cause you to become the scapegoat of issues or the hidden gem of the group or the workplace. So INFPs and ISFPs, I think this is especially true for you. You are the hidden gems of your workplace or your organization. You are the refreshing breath of fresh air that goes unnoticed. And the thing that helps people hit success and achievements that they don't even recognize. So a lot of time you are the direct factor, the one small nudge that caused success to happen in your organization or in your workplace. And often it is thanks to your secret contributions that society is able to thrive and be the good thing it is when it, when it is something good. So as an INFP or an ISFP, recognize that uh, there is a lot of things that you do under the radar that go and escape unnoticed.
and recognize that maybe someday people will realize that you're a lot smarter than what you make yourself out to be. Recognize that maybe some days, maybe someday people will start complimenting you and praising you for the positive influence that you had. Recognize that you are going to be the good guy in a lot of people's stories, that you're going to be the positive influence that, yeah, helped a lot of people get through difficult spots. So if you suffer from imposter syndrome, find yourself making some small rules for yourself. First rule, be more positive about your strengths and skills than what you currently allow yourself to be. So if you have a tendency to underplay your skills, overplay them a little bit instead to counter out that instinct. Recognize that I see myself a little bit worse than what I really am, so I should always accurately adjust my own self-image to be a bit more positive than what I think it is. And the same goes for your weaknesses. When looking at your weaknesses, recognize that you are slightly more negative about yourself than what you actually deserve. And so be a little bit nicer, and a little bit more forgiving towards yourself than what you currently are. Accept compliments. When people thank you for something you did, say you're welcome. Don't say it was nothing. Don't downplay it. Don't pretend it didn't happen. Say you're welcome. That's what a nice person does. You know, when somebody says thank you, what they expect from you is not, no, it's no problem. They, what they expect is that you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, of course. That's what people want to hear. <laughs> and uh, that's what you deserve. You deserve to take pride in the good things you do in life and to feel good about and to express how good you feel about yourself. And this often goes for an INFP or an ISFP. You know you're a lot better than what you think you are and what you put yourself out to be in the world around you. You're a bit afraid of showing or sharing the value that you know that you've had. I mean, you spent all life listening to yourself and then processing your feelings and learning about and discovering who you are. So you have come to know something incredible. You cannot study yourself for so long without knowing that, uh, yeah, there is something special there. There is something unique in me. There's something I can do that other people can't. There's something good about me. And so you're allowed to echo those things out into the universe and to uh, share the discoveries, the personal discoveries that you made with the world around you and to uh, be in reality the person that you see inside. Now, imposter syndrome is probably one of the most difficult patterns to break because it is so hardwired in your system and I want you to recognize why it happens. Imposter syndrome happens because you fear tribe retribution. You worry that by being too positive about yourself, too optimistic, too cheerful, too proud, you're gonna attract jealousy and envy and hate and aggression from the tribe. You're gonna attract tribe retribution. If you think you are something special, if you admit that you are something special, if you admit that you have something unique about you, you're going to have people come at you from the society around you that are gonna beat you down for it. So if you can take on imposter syndrome, if you can downplay yourself, if you can cover up the good things you do, cover up what makes you special, you're gonna keep people away from you and you're gonna prevent people from attacking you. And so it's a defense mechanism. It's purely done to protect yourself. It's purely done because you are afraid of criticism, afraid of negativity, afraid of jealousy, afraid of envy. And you don't have to be because those things are a part of life and they're part of the universe and those things are not your fault. And recognizing your own value or admitting to your own strength is not the same as going on a narcissistic ego trip. The problem isn't that people out there think they are better than what they are. The problem is that people out there think they are better than everyone else at what they are. So 
it is only a problem when you start inflating yourself to be something special at the expense of other people. When you start saying and raising yourself to the sky while or by actively undermining the skills and effort of other people. So the problem in today's society is people who are bragging and covering up their flaws and uh, making themselves out to be greater than what they are. The problem in today's society is a lot of people out there will uh, lie or manipulate other people to uh, think they are amazing by making other people feel worse about themselves. So making other people constantly have to apologize, making people constantly have to hide or be silent or uh, so around you. So that's the real narcissist, the kind of person that has such an inflated sense of self-worth by putting down other people, constantly making other people feel small. And INFPs don't do that. INFPs don't make people feel small. INFPs make people feel big. You are the true individualists and uh, you inspire people to be themselves, to be the best version of themselves. And you are at your best when you trust in yourself and who you are, a force of good in the world. So thank you INFPs for existing and thanks to all my INFP viewers. You are the, probably the reason I'm still doing YouTube and loving it so much and if you enjoy these kind of videos and if you find these messages to be helpful to you please subscribe and share this video with other people thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video